coming to you from the Deep South. This is the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. High impact leadership is not reserved for leaders, and it has nothing to do with your position, title, or rank. However, it does have everything to do with your character. It's time to climb to the next level and beyond, personally and professionally. Now, let's start making it happen with your host, Max Story. All right. Thanks for stopping by the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast today. Today, I continue my series on my book, Blue Collar Leadership and Teamwork, 30 Traits of High Impact Players. Today, I'm going to talk to you about another powerful trait. That trait, trait 17, is be helpful. Be helpful. And the subtitle for this for this trait, this chapter, is what you do reveals who you are. So if, if you're helpful, that tells somebody something about you. If you're not helpful, that tells somebody something about you. If the only time you help is when you get paid to help, that tells somebody about you. Something about you. But if you're helpful even when you don't get paid, well, that tells somebody something about you. Everything we, we're doing. I'm doing this podcast to be helpful. I'm, I'm exhibiting this trait every time I do a podcast, every time I post on LinkedIn or some other social media. And, and I hope you're following me on LinkedIn. Me, I hope you follow me and also Rhea. We both put out content every day on social media but linkedin is our main platform but we put stuff out on a whole lot of the other ones so if you're on some other platform go check it out see if we're there but linkedin is where everything starts and we copy and paste and, and that sort of thing but linkedin is, is the main it's the main platform and we got we both have newsletters i highly recommend you subscribing to those newsletters mine mine comes out once a week Rhea's is every other week we do those newsletters to be helpful. We do them for free. I do this podcast for free. I could click a button on the software here that I use or the platform I use to, to record, post, and schedule my podcast. I, I could click a button on there and turn it and monetize it, make it where you and other people who want to listen to my content would have to pay some amount. And I'd get a percentage of that, and the platform would get a percentage of that. But I don't do it. It probably cost me listeners because they probably don't promote my platform because it's not monetized. I don't want to monetize it. I'm not here to make money. I'm here to be helpful. A lot of these traits I'm covering with you. You may not have ever met me, but if you're listening to me, this is what you need to know. I'm on your team. I meet a lot of people that that wish I was around more often. I tell them, get on my podcast and I'll be right in your ear whenever you want me there. This is episode 336. What that means, you got a lot of catching up to do if you ain't listened to all those other ones and you, and you like what I'm talking about. All I'm going to do is motivate and inspire you to climb to a higher level. All I'm going to do is be helpful. Every one of these podcasts. I have people tell me they've listened to every episode multiple times. Every time they get something new, that's why they go back and listen to them over and over and over because they're growing. They're in a different place. But I appreciate all of you because you're allowing me to be helpful. I hope you share this thing out on social media somehow, get it out to the world. Not so I can make more money because I ain't making any money doing this, but so I can be more helpful. That's what I want you to help me do. Help me be more helpful. If people want to buy my books or or have us come in and speak, we're happy to do that. But I don't care if they do that. But I care if people get better. That's why I talk to people all the time for free. That's why I do the podcast. That's why I write newsletters. That's why I post on social media all the time. It's one way I can express this. I hope you do something like this. If you're, if you're a long-time listener, I hope you're putting out some stuff somewhere. Look at my social media, figure out how do you do something like that in your way. 
relative to who you are and what you're about. How can you be helpful? You know, sharing a sharing a picture of your steak with your cold drink sitting beside it at, at the bar. That that's nice. Let people know you're living the good life. I don't know how helpful it might be, but you're welcome to do that. You can keep doing that, but can you find ways to actually be helpful on all these platforms? Like a lot of people say, I don't get on social media so negative. Well, why don't you get on there and be positive? That's why social media is so negative is positive people won't get on there and be positive. And they say, well, if I do that, ain't nobody clicking and liking and following and sharing. Okay, what's that got to do with you? If you follow me on social media, you'll see most of my stuff don't get a whole lot of likes and shares. A lot of people, they don't like and share a lot of this type of content, especially the blue-collar folks. They just like to stand in the shadows and observe. And that's okay. I know you out there. That's why I do all this stuff. I don't get lots of book reviews. I don't get lots of podcast reviews. I don't get lots of nothing. But the one thing I get is, is I get... I get plenty of feedback to know what I'm doing is being helpful. It's making a difference. So let's talk about you and let's talk about this trait. And again, thank you for allowing me to be helpful. And if you want to be helpful, share my stuff, real stuff, anybody else's stuff, any, anybody you're learning from who is helping you, share their stuff. It ain't got to be me. I don't care who it is. I would appreciate it if it's me because I want to be helpful. But it can be anybody. I want to start off with a quote from Tim Tebow. He says, we have, to, we have to humble ourselves, and the way we do that is by serving other people. You see, when I'm talking about being helpful, some people like the word serve. They like to serve others. They, they want to be the kind of people that serves other people. But some people, they don't like the word serve. It makes them feel like they're weak or something. I don't know. I, I, I can't comprehend it. But, but a synonym for serving others is helping others. So a lot of people who don't want to serve somebody, they don't mind helping somebody. You're doing the same exact thing, so, so it don't matter what you call it. But here I'm calling it being helpful. Tim was talking about serving other people. I say that sometimes. It depends on what I'm talking about. But who, what you do reveals who you are. So when you choose to be helpful... You will be seen as being approachable, being more approachable. You, you hardly ever find people who really want to help people who are not approachable. People who want to help people want to be approached so they can find some people to help. Remember last trait, trait 16, was be approachable. A lot of these traits in here, again, once you start learning this, I, I highly encourage you to go through the book. Read the book cover to cover, and then go back through the book, and then you'll start to see how all these tie together. They, they, there's a lot of synergy between these traits. When you choose to be helpful, you are also choosing to intentionally build relationships. I, I doubt there's many people who have ever truly helped you, and you thought less of them because of it. You need some help. You appreciate those those folks giving you some help. After that now, things could happen and <laughs> things go south. I ain't talking about all that stuff. I'm talking about the stuff. Somebody helping you. What I'm talking about today, this trait, that the, the, the act of somebody helping you. Forget about the rest of the relationship. It could be good or bad. I ain't talking about that part. I'm talking about the, the actual act of helping you. When somebody helps you, they build trust. People who could help you but don't help you, they create distrust. So they, ha they haven't helped you, but they ain't done nothing against you except for they didn't help you when you needed help. So that creates distrust. Without doing nothing, you create distrust. There's a lot of areas in life that are like that. You want to grow and develop your influence, you need to build trust. One way is to be helpful. Now, I'll tell you this. I don't help people in a whole lot of kind of way, a lot of different ways. I stay in my lane. Personal growth, leadership development. That's how I help people. 
People reach out to me all the time, want me to be helpful in all kind of other ways. And I politely say no. And with a lot of those people, probably creates distrust because they don't understand getting in your lane and staying focused. I can help a lot of people in all kind of different ways. But I focus on, on my strength. And it's doing what I do right here. So I don't let anything else really get in my way. There's plenty of other people out there that can do all the other things who are passionate and driven to do those things. That's not me. That's those folks. You may, you may not want to do what I'm doing, but there's other things you can do to be helpful. If you become intentional about building relationships purely to help people excel at work or at home, you will become more valuable to more people. Think about it at work. If you went to work, you could, I don't know who you are today, but I know you can be more helpful. Imagine if you went to work, regardless of what your job is, regardless of what your position is, we're talking about becoming a high-impact team player. You went to work, and your goal beyond doing the real work you're getting paid to do, your secondary goal was to fill in all the cracks between your real work by helping other people. You'd be the most liked person on the team. Especially if you're helping the boss, you'd be highly liked. Of course, some other people who don't like helping people might think less of you because you helped the boss. That's the way it works. You've got to decide who you are, what you value, and then you've got to align your behaviors and your actions and your choices and your thoughts with that and forget about everybody else. Go live your life. Stop letting all these average people hold you back. Help the boss. Help your teammates. Help your support people. Help everybody. Help the customers. Help people ain't got nothing to do with you. You do it at work, you'll launch yourself professionally because to be helpful to other people on purpose like I'm talking about, you got to... You got to have a whole lot of other traits within you that's going to allow this to happen. But think about how 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 hard is it to be helpful? It ain't hard, I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> I assume you're pretty smart, but some of you may not be so smart. I still love you anyway. But what you need to know is it ain't hard to be helpful. It's just a choice. But it can launch you like a rocket if you'll make that choice on purpose everywhere in your personal life with your family your spouse your children your neighbor my my neighbor was was down earlier this year and with his, with his back and as soon as i found out about it i just started cutting his grass whenever i cut my grass and i do it with a push mower it takes me about two hours to do my lawn all my neighbors probably think i'm broke but but i like to exercise i like to think and i like to exercise I got a treadmill, but I'd I'd much rather walk around my yard mowing the grass with a push mower to get my exercise than walking on a treadmill. I, I just love mowing the lawn, cutting the grass. Anyway, so I would cut his grass. And what's crazy is during that time, I hurt my back. And Rhea, and even my mother, and his wife, but mainly Rhea, and my mother, started cutting his grass too, and my grass, because now I couldn't do it. And Rhea loves fitness. She got a lot. Of, she likes getting it other ways. But but my mom, my wife, my neighbor's wife, they chose to be helpful. That's just what we do whenever we travel. You know, got to roll our plastic big uh, garbage can out to the road. We usually roll it out no matter when we're leaving. We roll it out if we ain't going to be back in time to get it out. Sometimes it stays a day or two. A lot of times we're gone when they, you know, when the, when the folks come by and, and, and dump the garbage. But whenever we get home, our can ain't never by the road. It's always back by the house. That's because I have helpful neighbors. I got some good neighbors, I'm telling you what. And I like them, they like me, and that's the way it ought to be. Life is easier when you're helpful.
And we do lots of other things and other ways to, to help each other. So, hope you're thinking about that. I want to tell you about a, a man. He's a friend of mine. I got to know him back in around 2011, I think it was. Uh, 20, yeah, 2010 or 11. Somewhere back in there. He, he just retired. He's the, he was the head coach of the equestrian team at Auburn University. You may have heard me talk about him before. His name's Greg Williams. And uh, he, he wasn't just the coach. I mean, he started the program there in 1996. They didn't have a, they didn't have a equestrian program. He launched that team like a rocket. First thing I'm going to tell you is he's, he one of the most helpful people I've ever met in my life. Rhea and I had the privilege of having dinner at, at his house. You may have heard me talk about it before and got to, I actually met him on building mountain bike trails. Him and his wife was volunteering to come out and, and build mountain bike trails, same place we were. First day they ever started doing it, we were there and so was Greg and his wife, Sandy. And they were standing there with shovels just like we were and picks and uh, all these different type tools for building mountain bike trails in the woods so we could ride our, our bikes. But it was the very first kickoff meeting to potentially, you know, start building some trails there. And that that's actually, I remember that day. I remember where I was standing that day and I met Greg and Sandy and, and we built a relationship through, through that. And then, you know, soon after that, I became the founding president for a mountain bike chapter. Greg was on the board. Rio was the, uh, uh, secretary founding secretary and so we started that i remember greg I, we i was leaving near his house i had filled up with gas and he was turning in and i was pulling out and he stopped rolled down the wind we rolled down the windows and he stuck his head out the window he said hey man if you'll if you'll be the president of this mountain bike organization we're trying to build and create start he said if you'll be the president i'll be on the board i said well, greg if you'll be on the board i'll be the founding president and that was that was when i decided to do that take on that role and he and I and Rhea and a bunch of other people. I mean, we started off with like 150 people from scratch as members. And we built a lot of trails. We made, we did a lot of good. All of us were very helpful to the community, to the state park and all that sort of stuff. But I don't want to get too, too far off, off track on this one, but I want to talk to you because who is Greg? The most helpful person that I met like that, who is so helpful. I mean, Rhea is phenomenally helpful. She's probably actually the the most helpful person I know is, is Rhea. I said it was Greg, but I, I'm assuming you understand how I feel about Rhea. I'm talking about outside of my family. It's Greg. So what will be in help? And he lives all these other traits. He models these traits for his equestrian teams. Again, he started that team in 1996, and he just he just retired. He's still involved with the organization, but he retired and, and one of his uh, assistant coaches who'd been there for nearly 20 years with the team, she actually rode as a rider on the team. She just, she'd been there the, her whole career, her whole, you know, since she started college, she was riding for Auburn University and Greg's team. And, and she was assistant coach for a long time, maybe 10, 12 years, something like that. But she's been part of the program for nearly 20 years. But what, you know, what was he able to accomplish living these traits? Not, not just teaching them, but modeling them. But let me just tell you, uh, he got started in 1996, but since 2000, since the 2002-2003 season, Auburn University equestrian team under his leadership as head coach, they they had six national championships: 2006, 11, 13, 16, 18, 19. They they killed it. And I don't know a lot about equestrian. I, I have went and watched Greg and his team, you know, at different events. But they had five hunt seat national titles, if you know about that. They had one West national title. During that time, they had five Southeastern uh, conference titles. And they had three Southern equestrian championship titles. They got some stuff done. And I'm sure they're going to continue it because – Greg built a team that's going to outlive him. He's going to leave his legacy through all these other people. Pretty powerful. But what he is is helpful. And when we were at his house, 
sometimes. That's where I really noticed it the most. Or when I would go visit him and speak with him in his office. He always wanted to walk out. If he knew I was coming and when I was coming, he'd usually walk out and meet me in the parking lot and walk me back in. And then walk me back out. I want to carry my backpack or whatever I had. He wanted to carry it. One time it was raining. He wanted to go and take take me with an umbrella. I was able to talk him out of it, but he was wanting to do it really bad. I said, I'm going to be all right. But he got like a sixth sense for helping people, knowing when people need help. So really some high-impact people. They, they have all these traits. That's why they're high impact. That's why I call this 30 traits of high impact players. He's a high impact player. Even though he's a head coach relative to the entire team, he is a high impact player because this stuff ain't about position and title. You need to know there's always someone on your team who you can help. All you got to do is be willing to help them. You might be pick something up for them at the supply cage. You may be grab them a soda or or, or a snack when you when you when you own you know if you're out working if you kind of if you got the kind of job where you're out on the road with with people in vehicles you stop you may pick them up something special bring it hand them something on the way in in the morning it could be expose them to this type of content it could be leading book studies all kind of ways you could do it be giving them a hand on a task that that ain't your task but you got time to help them each team member has a unique set of life experiences and work experiences waiting to be unleashed. You can you can use those experiences to help people if you want to be helpful. And remember, I always ask you, if the boss told you you could add somebody to your team, they're going to hire somebody, but it's up to you to decide which one. Both these people are rock stars, but they tell you there's only one difference. One of these people, one of these people are extremely helpful. The other one, they might help you if they have to, but they really don't want to. Which one's going to get you a vote? I know I ask a lot of dumb questions. It's easy to look out the window and know you would say, hire the helpful person. Again, look in the mirror. Which one are you? Are you the helpful person on your team? If you're not, that's in that area, uh, an opportunity for improvement. Most people have no idea how valuable they are because they haven't learned how to leverage their value for their team. Many hold themselves and their teammates back. And many people, like I mentioned a minute ago, many people allow their teammates to hold them back. That, that's, that's, that's what the truth is right there. A lot of people would be more helpful if they didn't get ridiculed by their team. So consider the impact of these words from Mark Twain. He said, thousands of geniuses live and die undiscovered, either by themselves or by others. <laughs> either by themselves or by others. They don't discover what's within them, and the other people around them don't discover what's within them. That's some good tr leadership truth there from Mark Twain. So I got this challenge for you. Don't choose to live and die undiscovered by yourself or by others so i'm gonna do something i don't think i've done since i've been doing this series on this book i'm on i talked to you about blue collar bob and mentioned him and if you don't remember he, he's just a fictional character in, in in this book and i don't talk about him because it doesn't fit usually but i'm gonna read you a, a couple of paragraphs from this chapter so you can understand how i used him in this book but throughout the, not every chapter do I talk about Bob, but a lot of chapters I do talk about Bob. And I'll let Bob speak, actually. It's not really me. It's, it's my fictional character, Blue Collar Bob. And he started, he started his transformational journey at work by just discovering a quote on, on, a, on, a, on a, uh, a board, walking by, the, by, by a board to add a, a bulletin board with a quote on it. And then it became, I made it a theme throughout the book. And then I, I shared with him, he, let him share how it, it transformed him. So I'm jumping in. Remember, we're in chapter 17. So I hadn't read you a lot of other stuff about Bob. I'm just jumping into the middle of it. But he's passing by that bulletin board again. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just read you what I have here at the end of this chapter that you learn a little from Bob. But I hope you go get the book. So here we go. 
Bob says, another day, another quote. That was running through Bob, Blue Collar Bob's mind as he walked toward the bulletin board for his daily dose of personal motivation and inspiration. This had become a daily ritual, a habit for Bob. On the weekends, he still had to have his morning boost. He started searching for quotes on the internet on his days off to fill the void. A small group had begun to gather around the bulletin board for their morning coffee to discuss the daily quote and what it meant to them. As Blue Collar Bob approached to find out what wisdom the board would reveal, a small group had already formed. Little did Bob know he was about to discover a life-altering combination of words spoken by one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever lead a football team. He gazed up at the bulletin board and saw Peyton Manning's words, the most valuable player is the one who makes the most players valuable. The words impacted Bob in a new and powerful way. They gave him a higher sense of purpose. He felt he should and could make a bigger difference. What does it mean to you, Bob? Someone asked. Be helpful, he replied. I should be more helpful. So that's just a little snapshot of, you know, within chapter 17, that, that's all I, I put in there was you know, three paragraphs about Bob and from Bob. But that's how I use Bob to, to share. But, it's, you know, we're halfway into Bob's transformational journey here within this little book. But I but, uh, hope you kind of saw some insight there and, and, and got some teaching out of it. Because there was a couple of lessons right there, right? But I, I want to share with you a, a quote to close out this trait 17, be helpful, from my friend Tom Telesco. I've known Tom now for over 10 years. I met him at a John Maxwell leadership development training event uh, around 2012, 2013. Tom's got his own stuff. So it's Tom Telesco, T-E-L-E-S-C-O, if you were, were to want to check him out. He and his wife, Tanya, and she's got some phenomenal content. Both of them do. Go look them up, and, and you can learn from them too if, if what they offer is in alignment with who you are as a person. So Tom said this, We all have the power to help many people. But do we have the courage to start with one? That's a powerful little quote. We all have the power to help power to help many people, but do we have the courage to start with one? So I got a challenge to you based on Tom's quote right there, based on what I'm doing with you and for you, how I'm trying to help you. I got a challenge for you. I, I won't never know you do it. You ain't got to do it. But the challenge to you, is find one new person who don't know about the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. Introduce them to it. Pull it out on your phone. Hit play on it. Find an episode that's interesting to you. Hopefully you know these folks good enough to know it may be interesting to them. And say, hey, I want you to listen to this. And, and have a clip that resonates. You know, get a little segment that resonates. Or, at a minimum... Just pick out your favorite one. You tell them, hey, I'm going to send it to you. If they know how to listen to podcasts, you you just get a link, send it to them. Say, hey, I want you to listen to this. I'm going to talk to you about it in a couple of days. See what you think about it, and then follow up. But be helpful. If they don't like audios, podcasts, introduce them to one of the books. Tell them about my stuff on LinkedIn. I, I, I ain't trying to get you to sell them anything. I'm trying to get you to help them. If you're into my kind of content and you're not telling people about it, you're missing a phenomenal opportunity to be helpful. If you listen to my stuff every now and then, but you're listening to somebody else's stuff all the time, share about somebody else's stuff. Ultimately, I really don't care. What I care is, are you being helpful? We, meaning those of us who value this type of content, we need to share this with the world. We need to shout this stuff from the rude rooftops because our country and our world, our community, we need some help with character. So I want you to be helpful. Start spreading this message. 
you've got your own books, spread your own stuff. If you like other people, spread their stuff. Connect with people. Learn how learn how they like to learn. And then point them in that direction. We've got stuff you can read. We've got stuff you can listen to. I've got YouTube channels if you like to watch videos. All kind of stuff. What I want you to do, though, be helpful. Talk to you next time. Make it happen or someone else will. It might as well be you. Are you serious about taking your career and your life to the next level and beyond? Check out Max Story's Blue Collar Leadership Series books and others now available on audio along with paperback and ebooks at Amazon, iTunes, and Audible. Please visit bluecollarleadership.com to learn about Max books, programs, special offers, certifications, and more. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast.